And I'm glad to introduce our speaker for today, Professor Giro T. Adorador. Uh, Sir Giro has been an assistant professor at the Institute of Biological Sciences since August of 2016. He specializes in plant systematics, forest biodiversity, and ecology. Uh, a licensed forester, uh, Giro got his BS and MS forestry degrees from UPLB uh, in 2013 and 2016, respectively. Although his favorite flora to study right now are the Philippine uh, palms, he has discovered and co-discovered also a number of new forest plant species, which includes a mandinilla, uh, two rattans, and an orchid. So ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big virtual applause for Professor Giro T. Adorador. Sir Giro? Oh, yes, okay. So uh, good morning po sa lahat. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, so actually, um, this one, kasi kailangan daw ng uh, medyo catchy na title. So this one is um, Pambihira. No? So, Contemporary Discoveries of Philippine Palms. So, actually, uh, this is just an assortment of stories regarding the discovery of new species of palms in the past 20 years. No? Kasi 20 years old pa lang ako. Joke. <laughs> okay. So, um, good morning to all. So, uh, we'll get back to the uh, painting at the cover slide later. No? For the outline... So uh, we'll have a short, short um, introduction on Philippine palms and uh, recent stories on, uh, on discoveries and uh, the future prospects of these discoveries. Okay. So, uh -huh. so these plants are palm-like such that they have the stems and they have crown, no? The spirally crowded leaves towards the apices of the stem. So this is your um, dragon's blood, no? Dracaena. This one is your cycad, no? And then of course your tree ferns, no? Yung kahapon, okay, Sir Fulgent. And of course yung mga pandanus, no? So ito yung mga palm-like. Let's go to what really are the palms. So this is um a template of a um, multitude of colorful uh, parts of the palms. No? Of course, you have the minion-like structures, you have the scaly fruited rattans, you have the fishtail palms, and of course, these tiny rattans. What else? These are the more typical palms that we encounter. Of course, you have the anahaw, the coconut, yung mga nagmamama dyan, no habang nanonood. And of course, yung mga ratan. And yung sa mga mangrove, yung mga nipa. So these are the more commonly known palms throughout the Philippines. So palms are actually... Uh -huh, they are actually woody plants. No? Three meros sila since they are a monocot. It's their bow plant. And they have superior ovary and tricarpellate ovules. If you remember your coconut, no, yung coconut ninyo, you have three scars at the endocarp. Okay? At the exocarp, no? So actually, ayun ay endocarp nga, no? So those are yung mga attachment ng funiculus because the two ovules abort, that's why isa lang yung laman ng inyong nyog. Okay? So it's divided into five subfamilies, the fan palms, nipa, the, the ratans, the seroxyloids, and yung mga erect palms, the arecoids. Okay? So, um, as a trivia, no? So, actually, this is a, uh, this is the palm with the heaviest fruit, no? I think it's the heaviest fruited plant in the world, no? So it's the coco de mer or the double coconut. Okay? So uh, it weighs up to 30 kilograms, no? Halos kalahating kaban, lampas kalahating kaban ng bigas. And it only grows on um, Seychelles, no? Even though Maldivi ka yung kanyang epithet. Okay? Wait lang, nagahang ata ang aking... Okay? Oh, wait lang. 
naghang, no? Um, i-end ako ulit. Slides ako ulit. Okay. So, palms are actually um, solitary. They could be clustered without or without stem. They could be erect or climbing. At marami pang iba. The leaves, no? The leaves actually uh, could be of importance because kapag naka buka pa taas, they are a different subfamily. Kapag naka buka pa baba yung bawat leaflet, it is a different subfamily. Okay? And they could vary, no? Pwede siyang um, fan palm, pwede siyang feather-like. Okay? What else? So leaves have multitude of innovations pagdating sa palms. You have here the auricles, the ligules, the ocrea, and of course your spines, the grapnel hooks, and the cirrus. No, maraming marami talaga. For the inflorescences, no, they could be axillary or infrafoliar within the leaves or below the leaves, intra, inter, supra, above the leaves, and of course they could be variously speak it to paniculate. And mostly they are bearing bracts, no? They could be either leathery, woody, or papery. They could also be persistent or natatanggal agad. So ito yung bract, no? Laging merong bract ang mga palm, no? Para siyang um, aroid, but palms is more woody. And the inflorescence is mostly further branched, okay? So, um, at yung position ng bracts gives characteristic um, character for lineages of palms. For the flowers, no, ano siya, microcosm siya ng uh, sexual evolution in plants because all modes of reproductive strategies could be found therein. Pwede nga uh, unisexual, bisexual, pwedeng yung flowering strategy niya is pleonantic or tuloy-tuloy lang siyang mamunga or pwedeng hapasantic na isang pagkabunga niya mamatay na yung stem at marami pang iba. And uh, yung stamens, mostly number of trees as we've said earlier and so on. The gynoesium is uh, composed of one to three carpels, no? typically three. And the fruit could be very uh, diverse. No? They could be actually smooth. They could be somewhat corky. They could be um, spinescent. They could be scaly. So it depends on the lineages. And for the seed, no? so they almost adhere throughout, no? throughout the pericarp. And... Uh, this is also a distinguishing character for palms. Very few um, plant lineages consider the first leaf to be of this diagnostic importance. But for palms, they are. No? So it depends no, on how they actually develop. It could be remote tubular, no? the seed, and then may tutubo muna before the shoot, and so on. Okay? So, eophilet yung first leaf kasi depende sa itsura niya, pwedeng diagnostic character yan sa mga species, kahit species level. Okay? Okay, for the Philippine palms, no? since there have been a lot, a lot of revisions no? regarding palms in the last five years, just last five years, sobrang nagbago rin yung number natin. Ang i-represent ko sa inyo is actually the, uh, the updated form, okay, updated counts. So we have all in all 127 species of palms in 20 genera, 10 subtribes, 8 tribes, and 4 subfamilies. So this is a simple GIF, okay. Ito yung mga kilala natin, no? yung aricoid, yung kulay pula dyan. Kala mo yung mga fan palms and of course yung paraipoid. So this one is um, derived from 1,200 herbarium records, no? occurrence record na pinrases ko through GIS. So they are actually yung mga, typically yung mga type localities or yung mga paratypes. Okay, this is an interesting figure. Okay, 
Kilala nyo ba itong mga picture na nandito? Okay. So, more than half or 65 of the currently accepted palm species were described by Eduardo Beccari. He is a, an Italian botanist no, who specializes in palm in the early 20th century or late 1900s. So, um, check natin. Ito yung mga people who describe palms na kinikilala natin ngayon, yung currently accepted, of which it started the oldest um, described Philippine plant, no? kung i-accept nyo na native ang coconut, is actually by Linnaeus, of course. So si Linnaeus, of course, um, ito yung accumulation niya, itong line, ito yun, yung total, at ito naman yung per 20 years. Okay? Okay, si Carl Ludwig von Blume, si Bloom, described about three species, no? Mostly, dyan sa era na yan. And of course, Merrill, then the director of the, of the Philippine National Herbarium. And of course, Elmer, no? He is a very prolific um, collector, private collector of Philippine plants. All of which they, uh, they submit to Eduardo Beccari, based in Florence, Italy. Doon siya yung describe Okay? And of course, kaya lang naman yung ito, si Prof. Emeritus Sir Fernando. Okay? So, uh, what else? So these are some interesting figures, no? Only 18 or 14 percent of the palms were described by the same author who collected the type. Meaning, mostly throughout the history of Philippine palm descriptions, 14 percent lang yung siya mismo yung nagkolekta sa gubat at siya mismo yung nagdescribe. Okay, may figure tayo dyan, no? So, Beccari um, described about 65 species. And Edwino is counting pa yan, napakarami pa yan. Of which, 15 were supplied by Elmer and 4 were supplied by Merrill. Sila yung nag-collect for Beccari. So, maraming ganyan naman sa history ng Philippine plants. Okay? What else? So, this is a very interesting figure. No? Um, this one is for about more than half of what I've processed yesterday. So uh, almost 70 to 60 to 70 species. It takes on the average 4.8 years for a palm to be validly described after the collection of the holotype. Ayun yung gap. Pag nakolect mo na yung pinakamagandang specimen that you want to use as a holotype, it takes 4.8 years for you to process historically, sa Philippine plum, palms, para ma-back ma up mo siya na bago siya. Okay? So I think uh, this is one of the pambihira moments dito sa, sa webinar na to. No? So ganun katagal, no? Hindi yung... Because may nagsabi nga, no? Description is like a good wine. No? A, a good species is like a good wine. But the older it gets, the better it is. Pag sobrang tagal mo siyang uh, pinaprocess, marami pang evidences ka makikita. The better the circumscription is. Okay? So this one is uh, a little bit of the statistics for Philippine palms. No? So this stem height. Okay? So what you see here is that they could be categorized into understory palms or canopy palms. Okay? This is a uh, statistics for 127 species. Okay? So of which, may kita nyo rito, na mas maraming species na mas maliit yung height. Okay? So meaning, mostly ng species natin is less than 12 meters ang height. Okay? So, um, ayun. What else, no? Sa habit, they could be actually climbing or Erect, no? Naatayo lang. Whereas, yung climbing would be your ratans. Ito, ratan ito. Okay? May kita ninyo, guys, no? This is very uh, explanatory. The climbing palms have longer stems. Of course, no? Pagdating sa mga ratan, they could grow up to 150 meters in length. Kapag hindi na siya kaya ng puno, babagsak siya sa forest floor and it will again find new life. 
source, no? Akit uli siya. So that's why mas mahabang stem, okay, dun sa mga climbing, of course. So these are more significant figures, no? Ito yung sa dati kong talk. It's worth sharing. So they could be categorized into small-fruited or large-fruited, large no? So ito, this is orania, okay? And this one is heterospate. So ang difference is that less than 4 and more than 4 cm. Magkita ninyo rito na most palms have actually small fruit. Most Philippine palms are small-fruited. Okay? What else? Ito, this has something to do with the dispersal agent, no? Yung evolution niya with the dispersal syndrome. So, um, they could be categorized, no? Fruit color, pwede siyang cryptic, or parang itong ratan, no? Ito yung medyo dal yung kulay na hindi agad may kita ng ibon. Whereas, they could be conspicuous, okay? Pagating dun sa maliliit, no? Interestingly, okay, mas maraming cryptic colored na palms doon sa mas mahaba ang stem. Okay? Whereas, kapag mas mababa yung palm mo, this is the stem height, mas makulay yung iyong prutas. Okay? Kasi, kailangan maging visible sa understory ng fruit for more effective dispersal. Whereas, kapag mas mataas ka na, yung dispersal capability mo Okay, probabilistically, mas malaki kasi mas malaki yung area that you could disperse kasi kitang-kita ka agad, mas mataas agad. So, hindi niya na kailangan magkaroon ng colorful fruits. Okay? So, ayun, kaong pambihira sa inyo, no? Okay, um, this one, let's now go to the process of new species discovery. This applies to all group of plants, okay? So, uh, I, these are not official terms, okay? But um, they could be not mutually exclusive, okay? Pwede siyang classical taxonomy. Ito yung gagawa ng kadalasan since then. You have field works, you study the herbarium, and you approach it morpho-anatomically. Whereas, sa mga very species-rich groups na yung mga herbarium specimen ay very, very incomplete, the other way to do species discovery is reverse taxonomy. Meaning, molecular information muna that will aid into molecular delimitation, in morphological delimitation. This is what happened in actually your Saribus and Libistona. This one is from Bacon et al. Okay. Saribus is found here, whereas Libistona is found here. Okay. Since 2010, no, when the monograph of Libistona was published, these two groups were actually very, very distinctive. Pero only the molecular work of Bacon et al. Dun nila narealize na sige, sobrang layo nila, might as well make it a separate entity. That's why Saribus no, is um, detached from Libistona. Okay, and of course, in an era ng mga millennials, since millennials tayo, this is a time that species discovery is easier than ever. If you know the right tools to do it. Okay, of course, one of the more flagship example is actually the Cos Digital Flora, maintained by Pulsar uh, Barcelona and Nikren. And... Uh, any other forms, no? Flora Malishana and etc. And uh, interestingly, no? Species discovery could be classified as intentional or talagang pinunto mo, pinuntahan mo yung lugar kung saan talaga feeling mo may bagong species that is intentional. Or just serendipitously. Okay? Umakit kayo ng bundok just for plain leisure and you chance upon them. Or it could be yung iba na isama lang sa study nila, nandi naman nila focus. Or yung iba, umakit lang ng bundok, pinicture ng mga mountaineer. More stories on that. Okay? Okay. So, um, let's now have some stories, no? So, okay na ba? These are just actually stories. 
So this, um, I divided this into uh, forest types or substrate, no? But uh, this in general. So this one is in Salcedo Eastern Samar. Nakakalungkot, no? This is the forest. This is the remaining forest. Uh, but um, halos, hal halos hindi namin kilala yung mga nandyan. Very, very unique. And yet, this is actually what's happening in the Philippine forests, no? So they mine it out or they have illegal logging, etc. Charcoal making, okay? For ultramafic eras, let's start with this. This species is perhaps no, the most sought after palms sa landscaping. Okay. So um it's uh, on the market, no, it could fetch up to 80,000 per adult plant, no? 80,000. Okay. So the story goes, no, I hope no, Sister Edwina daw manonood ngayon. This one is a photo, an old photo he took way back 1997. This is Leonard Co. No? This one is um, Emiliano Sotalbo. Ito yung kasama niya sa pag-describe. And these are yung mga dalawang RA. So um, this is actually uh, a serendipitous discovery. Okay? Kasi daw, they are actually uh, for uh, biodiversity assessment na isang mining company in Carmen, Surigao del Sur. At nakita nila ang gantong itsura, no? story has it, no? sabi ni Sir Edwin, no? na it was first um, Leonard Co or Emiliano Sotalbo who first saw the plant. Since magkaasama sila sa gubat, no? nagulat sila, ay hindi, ah, may community daw doon, no? parang nyog lang yan, parang nyog. Kasi gantong itsura ng nyog, ito, kapag maliit, no? kapag yung punla pa lang. And then the day passed, no? they encountered one, two, tas dikit-dikit na may adult, tapos marilit yung mga bunga, na ganito kalit, ito yung piso, marilit yung mga bunga niya. Um, ako hindi ko naabutan si Sir Leonard ko, but to those who had, no? ano, mahilig daw siya mag-curse, no? but in, a, in, a, in the spirit of discovery. So nag-curse sila, no? Kasi parang tuwan-tuwa sila na mukha nyog naman ito, pero kakaiba. Sobrang kakaiba. So they named it Heterospate califrons, no? Cali is beautiful. Fronts is the leaves, no? In fronts. So, um, but I don't endorse this, no? Para sa mga plantito. So uh, I put it here, no? Since hagit naman siya, no? 2001 yung description niya. So um, very rare mga instances na yung mga kilala nating mga botanist na mga institution na no they were together in the discovery of this no So Leonard Co Edwino and Sotalbo were uh, were uh, of the same boat here no Sabay-sabay nilang discover Okay so um, 2019 no I did my MSc thesis in 2016 and I uh, I still find ways, no? Kung paano kaya magiging kakaiba ang isang halaman. Or at least, kung inherently kakaiba ba talaga siya. So this one I named after my advisor, no? Fernandoy. So very, very beautiful din siya. Kasi you have, you have the, uh, this uh, maroon, no? Or reddish maroon in fluorescence access, no? At yung dahon niya is actually, no? Yung down niya is actually, pwede siyang buo. Ito, isang buo siya, or hiwahiwalay. So in my years as a forester, no, since 2013, I've been to various places in the Philippines. No? Sa forest plants, sobra nag-ovaria. No? So I applied likewise sa ponds in my study of ponds. Hence, broad species concept na ginagamit. Okay? Okay? So um yan. But um I realized no I found out that an uh, herbarium sheet in Paris, France, no. Of course my digital herbarium I had no fun to go to Paris. Matches exactly with this palm. Okay? And likewise, no. This one is a photograph at um Surigao. Okay? 
by Dr. Edwino. This one, and it has been in cultivation since 2000. At yung interesting, no? Kasi yung maraming enthusiast ng halaman. Sometimes they collect, no? Ito yung wala pang batas dati. 1980 siya nag-collect. So by the name of Jeff Marcos of Floribunda Palm sa Hawaii, they collected both specimens from Luzon. This one is from Luzon, yung bilog. Okay. And this one is actually from um, Bukas Grande in Mindanao. Okay. So itong dalawang ito, they actually are planted side by side. Okay. Since dun sa society ng palms, I messaged him kung meron siyang collection ng mga heterospathy dati. Then na nagulat ako na meron siyang yung dinidescribe ko na kakaiba. Sa palms, maraming ganun, no? It was first introduced as um, a planting material or hortic horticultural item before they realized na kakaiba pala siya. So this is one of that story, no? Na kilala na siya sa merkado ng palm enthusiasts, pero hindi pa siya alam until 2019 when I described it. Okay? So kailangan mo lang talaga collaboration and uh, connection. So tapos na tayo sa mga ultramafic areas. No? Let's now go to uh, limestone areas. So um, noong unang panahon kasi ang mga collection is sa mga tuktok na mga bundok. And they do it along the trail. So yung mga nandun sa valleys, yung mga low-lying areas, they are mostly and interestingly mga under-collected. Kasi... Gusto na lang mapunta ni mga tuktok, yung mga botanist nung una. If, if you find accounts no, ng mga botanist natin, towards the trail lang sila and towards the summit. Pero yung mga mabababa na ibang substrate, hindi masyado kinokonektahan. So such is the story dito sa limestone area sa Sama. At just an elevation of less than 400 meters, no, may kita nyo na mossy na siya. Okay? At... Um, Very, very old na yung geologic formation ng limestone ng Samar. So, uh, yung mga tuktok is actually medyo, medyo hindi na siya sharp, no? As compared dun sa mga palawan and etc. Dun sa mga limestone area, so we discovered maraming maraming kakaibang species and we're still describing some of them. Of which, I've co-discovered this with my uh, wife now, no? Si Ze. So, um, ang kakaiba sa kanya is that, at yung pambihira, no? is that yung isang puno, a single tree, could actually be bearing a staminate inflorescence or an inflorescence with both uni, um, unisexual flowers. Ito, um, male flowers lahat sila. Samantalang dito, they are actually all all um, triads, no? So, meron kayong dalawang lalaki at isang babaeng flowers. So, um, ito yung mga gantong condition sa palm, hindi hindi mo siya makikita kapag isang beses ka lang pumunta sa site. You need to go to the same site repeatedly over the years, no? To document such flowering condition. Kasi, um, it is actually for temporal separation, no? That what makes this palm very unique. Okay. At uh, ito yun, no? So this is the um, the palm, no? Etong nasa taas is actually the Oranya zeye. Etong hawak ni Ze is actually the decipiens. Ito yung mga bunga na yan, yung makakapal yung pericarp sa baba. Okay? So um interestingly, they are actually edifically um edaphically restricted palms, no? They are only growing on limestone areas, whereas yung mga decipients, doon siya sa mga valleys sa may mga zonal soils. So bukod doon is yung uh, sexual separation niya, no? Is, yung reproductive strategy rather is very, very unique. Okay? Okay, so these one are the two um, ratans no, I've described. We've described no, with uh, Edwino, so Dr. Edwino. So, um, Luckily, no, I have we have corresponded with Henderson no, of the New York Botanical Garden. And uh, 
he was actually revising the Kalamos of the World when we were writing this down. Okay? And uh, very generously, no? He shared, he shared his um, ideas on, on the circumscription of these two taxa. And finally, no? Ito dapat yung isa would be, um, this one is Kalamos Warayanos. Yung isa is Karsikola. Um, may story tayo dun mamaya. Warayanos kasi sa summary, yung mga Waray-speaking people no, in honor of them. And the different thing is that yung mga pinakamalapit niyang species is actually towards this um, line. No? Ito yung microspiron. No? This is in a broad sense by Henderson. And very, very uh, distinct. Of course, geographically, yung Warayanos. And ito yung uh, kakaiba, no? The story goes, no? We were actually um, going back to summer almost twice a year ever since uh, 2013, 2014, no? So, pabalik-balikan talaga kami kasi we were very, very um, at all, no? Dun sa ganda ng gubal. When we go to the summits, no? Nagtatabas kami. Of course, uh, the guides do that, no? yung mga nagtatabas. At sa pagtatabas namin, no, kasi maraming mga nagsasalaw sa labit ng mga ratan. At at first, et, et yung mga discovery na hindi serendipitous, kailangan talaga pinaglalaanan ng oras. no Almost 4.8 years then, no, when I described this from the first discovery. So, uh, and then 2015 and 2016, pabalik-balik kami on the same path and I realized, no, Etong mga ratan na ito kapag pinot nung pinupu, nung pinutol namin dito, nung pinutol namin, no, as we cleared in the previous year, they actually grow yung mga shoots niya, vegetative shoots doon sa cut portions. This must be something new, no? Kasi very very actually this is undocumented in ratans, no? Yung buong stem ang pinutol mo and yet mabubuhay siya with a new shoot. Yung iba doon sa inflorescence, parang sa orchid, you call that um, KK, di ba? Sa mga palinopsis, meron doon mag-vegetative structure, no? Kasi mag-twitch yung mga genes niya. Parang dito, at least morphological evidence, no? Doon sa rata na to, pag pinutol mo, doon siya mabubuhay. In this case, ako may mga aso, no? Wait lang. Dito siya nag-ugat. Okay? What else? So this one is... um. Calamus carsicola, no? So um, the type I collected the type in 2016, but but the first collection of this palm dated way back 101 years ago, no? So uh, may mga aso, sana rinig nyo ako. okay? So actually, this one is very different in such a way na yung terminal leaflet niya is actually mukhang arrow tail. No? As in, pinakamalapit sa kanya, hiwalay talaga yung dahon, hindi siya nagsasama together. And uh, napakarami pang uh, differences no? that makes it very, very unique. So the interesting story here is that this should have been uh, synonymized or um, not accepted in the nomenclature. No? Kasi when I have it reviewed by Henderson dun sa gumagawa ng monograph ng Kalamos during that time. Ang dapat pangaral nito is actually Calcifilus. No? Calcifilus. And then, it so happened na sinabi niya no? na I'm also naming Calcifilus from Borneo eh since nasa advanced review na yung kanya, we adjusted, no? We, uh, Dr. Edwina and I adjusted na sige, karsikola na lang. No? Karsi is a kars. No? So um, it could have been a um, nomen illegitimate, no? illegitimate name. Okay? But um, dapat kailangan nyo rin maipag-usap dun sa mga authority minsan. Okay. So uh, pagating sa mga landscape, okay, that's why we keep coming back to Samar kahit napaka-delikado. No? Parang uh, yung sa Mindanao, yung kahapon, Sobrang dami ring mga mga unwanted um, mga person na mga kasalamuha mo pero it happens no sa field work. So this one is a uh, Mount Purao, the highest point in Summer Island. And uh, interesting story is that 
Dr. Grueso was the first, no, according to the locals, no, he was the first non-local na umakyat sa tuktok ng Mount Purao. During their, uh, bago i-establish yung National Park, no, sila yung nag-rapid biodiversity assessment. And uh, before I describe this, no, even before I found this palm, I've been um, sharing stories with Dr. Grueso, no? And sinabi niya sa akin na may kakaibang farm doon sa tuktok ng Mount Brow. So I just took note of that. And then interestingly, I searched YouTube, no? This one of the least you would expect. Pero tingin ko meron din namang na-describe na rin from YouTube. So this one is from um, Johnny Bonifacio, yung kilang cave enthusiast sa sama. Inakit nila yung Mount Turaw and at this point no, sa YouTube, nagpakita yung sinasabing kakaibang palm. E ewan ko kung na-amiss kayo or ewan. Pero ako, tuwang-tuwa ako no, na nag-match yung kwento ni Dr. Grueso at yung video no, ni Johnny. So we embarked on a field work on 2015 at nakita namin siya. Okay. So uh, since my GP na we collected it and as I go as we go around Summer Island no together with my wife no conducting her MSc there I realize that the variability is um is is very very great at least morphologically But um, since wala namang mga complete barriers sa Summer Island or yung known location niya kahit sa Northeast Mindanao and Dinagat, might as well circumscribe it as a very, very broadly uh, described plant or palm. And uh, ganun eh, no? And uh, maraming maraming evidence dapat of which the uh, DNA evidence is actually uh, yung in order to support our hypothesis, no? Our collaborators at Q are conducting it now. No, but for the meantime, no, this will do. Na very very variable siya across the landscape. Okay? So this is a palm, no, Pinanga grovezoi. And uh, and luckily, mahirap i-propagate ito, no? Ayun, kung anong meron sa lupa ng sama. And across the landscape, no? For the namesake, no? Pinanga Samarano was discovered or first collected in 1914. Okay, this one is Samarana. And same goes with most palms, no? We've circumscribed it very broadly, no? Kasi continuous yung variability niya, no? Sa ibang population, very distinctive. But in between the populations, nandun na yung magkakaparehas. Okay, and since these are palms, They have such kind of fruits; they could might as well be distributed on the same way as other palms, no? So, ibat ibang itsura ng dahon niya, ibat ibang itsura ng fruit niya, isang species lang yan. Okay, so um, the genetic evidence will be ah published soon, no? Sana, okay. But um, this is how we do it, no? You 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 collate all the evidences at hand, no? And on your uh, working theory, no? On biogeographic history or uh, dispersal theory, that makes it a very uh, good candidate for a biological species, actually. And across the landscape, no? Eto yung mga pagkakataon na. Tinarget mong maghanap sa isang napakalayong lugar at wala ka na tagpuan. May mga ganong story, no? But, luckily, no? On their second attempt, hindi na ako kasama doon. Hindi na kami kasama. Eugene, no? Logato. Um, collected the palm only known then from Borneo. This one is Lepidota. And uh, it is very different from this one, yung Geonomiformis, no? In such a way na ito, nagpupula yung ripe fruits niya. At tabi-tabi yung fruit niya, okay? Ito, sobrang magkakalayo at hanggang dilaw lang siya. And uh, 
if if you do field work, no, a glance at the leaves. First glance at the leaves. Kita mo agad nakakaiba siya, no? Ewan ko if if you can relate, guys. But in this case, ito medyo ano siya, um herbaceous. Okay? Samantalang ito um medyo chartaceous or papery, no? Thin papery. Ito medyo uh, thick papery, no? Ang ang hirap i-explain. But for uh, palm enthusiasts, no? Maraming palm enthusiasts diyan. At a glance, kita mo agad nakakaiba. More than yung fruits and etc. Okay? Okay. So, um, those are some of the palms described no, in the past 20 years. And, uh, hindi ko nasama din yung kalamos, um, kal eh, kalamos um, erinaceus, no? Or yung isa. Okay po ba yung audio, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, for the future prospects, Ito, no? There are very, very uh, many, many uh, uh, fertile grounds, no? To start with. Of course, kailangan mo lang ng uh, collaborations, no? For you to start, no? So, exploring the subalpine areas, no? To deal further new discovery for heterospate. So, this is no secret, no? Sa CDFP, they found this, no? Felser and Barcelona found this. Edwino, Dr. Edwino also collected this, no? And the uh, Lilio in Dinagat. So, uh, kakaiba siya, no? And this one, no? Through kay uh, Sir John Ray Calyado of National Museum. He forwarded me um, an image, no? From his fellow mountaineer. Na etong halaman na to, no? Hindi namin alam kung ano yan. And sometimes, no? Kaya that's why it's Pinoy mountaineer sa mga mountaineering excursions, no? Ito naman, no, from a PhD thesis ni Ma'am Mandia, no? So, um, sa Mount Halcon, he found an interesting palm, no? Pero hindi pa namin examine yung collection and we plan on going on those sites in the future. So, um, armed with this um, knowledge and uh, the broad species, no? So, we want to see the variability, no? Across it's probable occurrence. So we will try to go to such places and see kung iisang species lang ba siya or they could be cryptic species. What else, no? So this one is, uh, actually this was published in 2017, no? But we, it is um, undescribed, no? This is modulan. But um, this is to show, no, that um, social media, no, ito yung mga nginanganga, will actually help you, no? Kasi there are no idea kung ang reproductive strategy ng ibang areka natin is actually na una yung lalaki, may nog, or yung babaeng bulaklak, maging receptive, no? So that's why in this series of photographs, no? This one, mukhang na una yung female flower. Ito naman, mukhang na una rin yung female flower. Sa modulan, check natin kung na una or huli, no? And... I put yung nga nga here, no? yung mama, is actually yung mga mamanua or yung ibang mga waray no? sa kalibliban, they actually know that there are two species of areka. Yung isa, ito, yung kaliso, okay, na malaki daw, at ito, basta maliit, nanginanganga rin nila. So, ang uh, evidence dito would come from different source na yung sa anthropological perspective, no? yung um, yung ganung field sometimes no yung mga or hindi pala sometimes mostly what the natives tell you is actually true K ang kailangan mo lang gawin is to validate that okay so um documenting the reproductive strategy no could be no kasi nakakamangha na ginagamit nila kilala nila tayo hindi natin kilala Magaling talaga sila, no? And uh, this is actually uh, my ongoing uh, research, no? So, um, this one, dun ule, no? Sa Coast Digital Flora, there are multitude of new species curated therein, no? Ay, wait lang. Yan. So, of which, this one is uh, from Panay. This one is from Sibuyan, no? We're working with this one. This is a photograph by Janre. And, uh, 
interestingly, no? interestingly, Leonard Co. led an expedition throughout Luzon 1990 to 1995. And he collected enormous amount of herbarium materials of which luckily may nasama mga palms. Of which in the northeast corner of Luzon, this is actually a new species. No? And this one is collected by an expedition led by Leonard Cohn. No? That's why sinama ko na rin siya sa CDFQ because it is one of his legacy no? na kailangan natin tularan. No? So parang kanina, hindi ka man yung mag-describe, no? at least you collect for somebody else, lalo pag ibang plant group, no? you will rip it no? kahit, kahit wala ka na sa mundo. No? Andun pa rin yung legacy mo na no? parang itong kay Leonard and of course yung flora. And uh, eto no inaantay na lang yung onting um, gen uh, molecular evidence but um, this is very very exciting. This is one of the most pambihira moments that we we've had in uh, in in recent times no. It could probably be a new genus of palm no kasi etong uh, subtribe that includes Adonija this is Palawan and this one is the rest of the uh, Spermatinae, in between them, maraming pwedeng kakaiba pa, no? So, um, series of expeditions throughout um, six, five years, no? We've discovered populations sa iba't ibang lugar sa Pilipinas. And we keep compiling evidence, no? We keep compiling it and we, we return to the sites kasi we want really to be sure. At yung turo ni Sir Edwino, no? Um, Give it a time, no? Give it a time to sink para sa'yo. Kasi kapag pinablish mo yan, it's actually your name at stake. It applies to all, no? Sa lahat ng mga nagkatrabaho sa plants, sa plant group, no? And uh, kudos dun sa mga halos kasing uh, generation natin, no? What else, no? And uh, to cap it off, this is um perhaps the pambihira, no? Most pambihira moment in here. August Borgay was, was a uh, French artist, is a French artist, no? In uh, early uh, 1700s or 1800s, no? And he uh, made landscapes, portraits, no? No mga exotic places, especially China, India, and lucky meron sa Pilipinas. Lucky meron sa Pilipinas. And of this... Very realistic in drawing niya, no? Um, actually, I'm in contact with um, Sir Ronald Achacoso, no? Of the uh, Pinto Art Museum and the um, yung Philippine Native Plants Conservation Society. Kasi siya artist. And I asked him, realistic ka yung mga paintings ni August Borget, no? Borget. Kasi French pala, no? And, uh, and then he had talks with his colleagues, no? Sabi nila, no? They came to a uh, sim parang um, medyo conclusion na most probably he will depict it as he saw it. Okay? So, ito muha naman siyang banana. Ito muha naman siyang uh, ewan ko ano. Ito, this one is a date palm, no? These two are from India. This one, this picture at your right screen, guys, Ah, ready na yung masyak, no? It was um, a landscape in Halahala. Halahala is a town in Rizal, in the modern day Rizal, no? Facing, no? Yung loob ng, yung loob ng Laguna, de Bay. So what makes it more interesting is that when you look, no? So ito, you know, may artistic touch, no? A ako medyo frustrated um, artist din ako, no? Kasi uh, I really want to go, of course, yung mga illustrations and etc. So when I came across this picture, no, with, with this um, knowledge regarding palms, no, I've consulted with my colleagues also. Ito yung, ito yung palm, no? you have a single stem, the leaves are pinnate, the inflorescence is actually um, hapasantic, meaning when it flowers, soon it will die. The stem is hapasantic. So there, 
could be just a handful of genus of palm that could exhibit such condition, of which we collapse it into just two. Okay, this one, these both palms are actually hapasanti. The stem will die after flowering. Okay, this one, okay, kung kailan nyo tong isa to, at yung mga bully, yung binebenta, yung kinakain, this one is actually your uh, koraifa, okay, yung mga koraifa utan, or buri, ito yung ginagawang mga salakot, mga sombrero, and etc. Ito naman ay sago, no? Yung sago is actually galing sa pith, ito, na metroxylon sago. Interestingly, no, metroxylon sago is actually pinnate, okay, whereas yung koraifa is actually fan shape no fan leaf dito pagdating dito kasi lumiliit talaga yung pinnate leaves kapag towards the apex no ng flowering is that ito ay pinnate and yet and yet it is single stem sago all sago no metroxylon sago are clustering okay doon sa wetlands ito pa Okay, ano kaya 'yon? So um this one is probably, no? Probably a very very unique species of metroxylon. Okay? Naturally, metroxylon are just found in uh, Greater New Guinea and uh, Pacific Islands. Yung nandito sa Pilipinas, and this one is from Clutchley et al, no? This one is a distribution of the cultivated sago, no? of which meron Palawan hanggang Samar na record namin. But on Luzon, there have been no records of metroxylon in Luzon. So you come to think, totoo kaya itong ginawa ni August Borget. So there's only one thing to find out. Okay? So um, marami, no? marami ideas, but kulang na mga gagawa. And I encourage you to do it. And ito, uh, I, th I think this is an, uh, new species discoveries, no? Await those who make use of available resources, no? Who meticulously conduct taxonomic research, no? Kasi kailangan na very keen ka sa detail. And of course, to those who keep the fire burning kahit wala tayong masyadong suporta sa gobyerno. So it's actually a, a sense of... Um, Fulfillment para sa inyo, no? If you want to discover, if you want to explore the unknown, go ahead, no? Walang pumipigil sa inyo. And by that, um, gusto ko magpasalamat of course ito sa mga tao and of course sa wife ko lalo. And thank you. Ayan. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir uh, Giro. Sabi nga ni ah. Sir Fulgent kahapon, uh, fantastic. Yung sa inyo, Palm Bihira. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, it's a very interesting uh, discussion, sir. No? Ang dami mo nating tinransend. No? May history. Pero po tayong mga uh, discoveries. Merong facts and figures. And I think uh, marami pong magiging tanong yung ating uh, audience today. But uh, as uh, per our promise, uh, we will be conducting our short quiz. So, just to... Uh, you know, measure things, whether our audience have been listening and, uh, you know, taking notes. So let me just uh, first uh, share my screen. And then, uh, okay, so uh, this is just multiple choice. Okay, the first question is, what palm produces the heaviest fruit up to 30 kilograms? Lodoise, Lodoise, Maldivica, Lodo... Okay, so uh, sixty-six percent of you answered uh, the first uh, option, and uh, the rest the next. So let's see. The answer is okay. So sixty-six of you percent of you got it correctly. Next, uh, I think this is the average number of years for. Uh, Philippine palm species to be officially published, described from the time of the holotypes collection. I think that's based on your experience, sir, right? And uh, history. Uh, 
history okay okay let's see the answers for point eight I, wow marami nakikinig let's see all right so it's a, a, an average of five years for your uh, your collection holotype collection to be published and officially uh, known as a new species for pilpin palms okay. and what is the most horticularly sought after philippine endemic palm species it is is it heterospathe fernandoi califrons cagayanensis or philippinensis Okay, so we have mixed answers. Mm -hmm. And the correct answer is Heterospate Califrons. Sir, sino mm -hmm. nga ba nakap sino nakapag uh, discover nan? Si Sir Edrino. Oh, si Sir Fernando. Okay. All right, next. Uh, fourth question. Ang mahal yan eh. <laughs> mahal ba yan? Okay. So, what recently oh. described palm species was then uh, spotted via YouTube? And half of you answered Pinanga Gruezoi. So let's see the answer. And YouTube, it's eh? correct. YouTube. Na, masa search pa rin yata sa YouTube yun, sir, no? Ah, uh, my search. Yeah. Okay, our last uh, uh, question. What is the mysterious palm in a landscape painting by Auguste Bourget? Okay. Yeah. Yun yun na na doon. <laughs> <laughs> Metroxylon. Uh, the answer is okay, so 74% got it. So marami ding mga nakakuha, marami naging attentive. Marami ba? <laughs> uh, I think so. Okay. And then uh, okay. And then oh sh mga nakakuha, 5 out of 5. I think uh, Suluigi, Sheila, uh, Kyle, Irene, and Miss a Certain K. So, siguro ang gawin nyo na lang, uh, contact Sir Jiro for that price <laughs> later on. Actually, <laughs> nag-chat si Ate Michelle. Yes, oo. Oh. Nagbubuko just daw siya ngayon, kaya hindi na siya sumali. <laughs> I see. So, itong limang nanalong ito, itong limang uh, top natures na ito, email Sir Jiro mamaya, screen capture nyo ito para ito ang inyong uh, verification slip. Okay, so we proceed to the uh, question and answer uh, segment. We I'm gonna stop this sharing, and then uh, I hope we have uh, some questions already at the chat box. All right, so okay, uh, we have a few questions here already. So this one uh, I I took this question from uh, from the FB stream. Uh, it's uh, from Amatus Roy. Uh, Roy. He's, uh, He's from Pampanga State Agricultural University, and he is asking if there are, if there are, if there are erect palms uh, sensitive to hot and dry weather, uh, because uh, that's based on their observation, uh, probably in Pampanga where there we they don't see much uh, erect palms within Mount Arayat during the hot and dry uh, climate. Uh, hmm. What are your thoughts on that, sir? Okay. Um, sige, salamat po. Actually, um, si Sir Roy, no? forestry student din to, PhD student. Mm -hmm. So, um, hindi pa namin nakapunta, kami nakapunta sa Arayat, no? but from what I've read, no, Mount Arayat is um, characterized by a very hot weather, no? climate na rin siguro. So, um, depende sa lineage ng palm. No? May mga palm na sturdy, pagdating sa dry climate kaya mga pang landscape natin madalas ng mga palms galing Madagascar mm -hmm. or Africa kasi they could withstand the uh, temperature fluctuations pagdating naman sa mga endemic palms natin no normally yung mga pinanga areca very sensitive yan na kailangan very humid no adapted talaga sila sa sa evergreen conditions and uh, rainforest conditions yon so uh, interesting no maraming bagong species diyan from the herbarium alone, sana makapunta rin yung group next time. Mm -hmm. Yan po. So, okay. So, uh, I think mm -hmm. siguro maybe 
uh, Mr. Amatus can also invite you to explore Mount Arayat in the future. Actually, okay. Napupurnada na sa pandemic. Okay. So, uh, from uh, Mona Lisa Bagat of UP Diliman, um, uh, she's asking if you're using dichotomous keys and uh, what are you using for identification? Also, in terms of molecular identification, what markers are you using? Is one marker enough for the uh, to identify palms? Yeah, okay. So um, since um, palms from the seedling up to the flowers, no, even the vegetative organs, readily give um, um, distinguishing characters. No? Very, uh, para ano siya Sibuyas versus bawang, no? Mm -hmm. So we don't need molecular markers as of the moment, no, for that. Kasi sa classical taxonomy, it's actually morpho-anatomical before you embark on molecular studies. Reverse taxonomy is the other way around. With enough evidences, no? Kasi morphology is actually a, is a phenotype plus the genotype, no? The, yung phenotype is actually environment plus the genotype. So what concocts as a form that we see, that we touch, is actually based, of course, sa DNA niya. And uh, kaya, kaya sa ngayon, hindi pa masyado ginagamit yung barcoding, though we are actually on it. But um, for molecular markers, in the early 2000, one or two molecular markers is enough, no? regions are enough. But for uh, recent studies, they are actually mm -hmm. we are actually using um seven to nine, para mas robust yung phylogenetic relationships na And uh, some some and my colleagues no, we are uh, they are no some molecular aspects sila embarking on uh, next generation sequencing, and almost whole genomic na no. Mm -hmm. So um more on that soon. And for the dichotomous keys, um. Eduardo Pecari really is a very great um, palmologist, no? Kahit yung kinyan, even 1919, could still be applicable with few um, nomenclatural updates. But um, you can actually um, PM me if you want some uh, very good keys. Pagating sa genus, no? And, uh, or you can actually just PM yung gumawa ng genera palmarum. No, it's uh, actually the Bible of palms in the world. You can actually have access to that if you can just directly communicate. I, I can assist you if you want. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so Miss uh, Magat, you just uh, you can email uh, Sir Giro. Maybe Sir Giro can, if it's okay, you could chat. Uh, put your email in the chat box later. So um, okay, we have a question here from. From Sally Benjamin Joseph Bupati. Uh, sir, hello, sir. What is the difference between palms found in limestone areas and those that are found in uh, coastal areas? Probably what are their, uh, how can you distinguish them? Okay, uh, actually, uh, I think Benjamin is a uh, international student, no? I, uh, I forgot to speak all the way in English, no? So um, for the question, no, actually it depends on the site. No? Limestone areas could also actually occur on coastal areas or even inlands, no? depending on the geomorphology of the site. So um, for the characters no, that define them is that normally those found in uh, coastal areas for erect palms, no, they're actually... Um, very, very sturdy. I don't know how to describe them. No? There might be no character to describe, but the leaves are uh, very persistent. No? Because if it is a limiting environment, no, you need to um, prioritize on uh, carbon efficiency. That's why you, you hold to your leaves as long as possible. The leaves are mostly persistent in limestone areas or palms, erect palms. And for coastal areas, there are actually a, just a handful of palms known to occur in coastal areas, of which yung mga mangrove associate halos, no? yung mga nipa, and of course yung mga erect palms naman, yung heterospate elatam. In the Philippines, may bilang nyo, you can count no? with, with, with your both hands yung mga species that only occurs in coastal areas. 
there might be a no defining character for them all, but all of them is, um, of course, no, um, salt tolerant and uh, dispersed by birds mostly. No? Pag sa mga coastal era. So maliliit, small fruited, brightly colored fruits mm -hmm. mostly. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, from Adrian Sopitran of Cavite State University. Adrian. Uh, Adrian, sir. Hi, Prof. Zero. Uh, he hopes that uh, many people or students would be able to show interest in studying the palms. Wala nga eh. and, <laughs> and he's asking, what are some good dichotomous keys that we can use to identify the palms? Okay, so um, ayun, as, as I told earlier, yung kay uh, Eduardo Becari, 1919, Maganda rin yung kay Pancho at Gruezo no? mm -hmm. on their treatment of the monocots, vascular flora of Mount Makiling, part 4. And you can PM me no? and I can relay you to uh, world authorities. Okay. So, uh, Adrian, shout out sa iyo. Hi, ah, email ko na lang si Adrian. <laughs> uh, email na. Um, a question from uh, Luigi Villalobos. Uh, uh, he would like to confirm if uh, the coconuts which you can usually find in uh, mountains or mountain mountainous areas where they're originally uh, planted by locals there. So he's from Batangas and uh, he sees many plants up above the mountains there. Yes, yes. Okay. So um, actually, we have come to top it in the last years, no? Mm -hmm. Siguro kailangan na we need to define a coconut forest in the Philippines because they are so... Uh, Uh, they are so planted everywhere, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, mostly since it's actually the dispersal is for oceanic, they are naturally only occurring on coastal areas, but not really towards the mountainous areas. So mostly they are actually brought by the migrants mm -hmm. or the native inhabitants of the area. So, uh, additional question from Adrian. Uh, he's just curious. What are some of the distinct or conservative characters that palms exhibit during their juvenile stages? Yon. So, um, okay. So, pa medyo mukhang, uh, palms actually look like aroids. So, in a sense, aroids are just herbaceous and palms are actually woody. So, one of their strategies is that in their juvenile stages, no? If you see your coconut or uh, any palm outside your surrounding, I want you to observe if the internodes are actually um, short or long. Because mm -hmm. um, shorter internodes suggests that light is very limiting. That's why it has a very slow growth. More than the edaphic conditions, is actually the light. So uh, one of the uh, physiological uh, Um, strategy of palms is that they will not grow, they will not lengthen their stem if light is not available. Okay, so that's one of their strategy. So that's why um, in uh, or on both extremes, no, very low light or very high light, they won't develop stem at all or very very short in their nose. And the more so, no, from the seedling, no. It is from the plumule, and then your first leaf will emerge. So um, there are actually many mechanical uh, strategies of palms, more than it is um, just woody. No, so uh, the growth of the stem itself, the development of the prop roots, and uh, and of course, yung know, from the seedling ayon mga plumule or uh, the germination strategies. Yun po. Okay. Okay. I hope. Uh... Clear sa'yo yun, Adrian. And uh, we have a question from Justin Christian Mulig. Uh, sir, did you use uh, DNA barcoding in your taxonomic studies? Uh, and his follow-up question is, um, when will you consider molecular tools in characterizing new species? Yes, yes. So actually, that's a good question. No? So as I told earlier, no, um, it's like the an analogy between a sibuyas and the bawang that uh, when characters are very enough, no. I think there's no point of conducting a DNA barcoding unless you have other um, other end results in mind. Mm -hmm. But um, for a classical taxonomy, no, um, such field explorations, meticulous herbarium studies, and morphoanatomical uh, circumscription, 
are just enough. So as I told you, no, I embark on classical taxonomy, but we are actually, um, they're actually not mutually exclusive, actually compatible or complementary ang game A. I actually adhere to that, such that um, I just don't do the reverse, but, but because evidences are available, I do the classical taxonomy and embark on molecular studies to answer some deeper questions on their evolution, on their distribution, which we are actually embarking right now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, shout out kay, Ms., uh, kay Leslie Obiso, who's interested uh, in this discussion for the uh, KBA, or is it a key bird uh, area? Of, key uh, biodiversity uh, key area. Key biodiversity area of uh, Cebu Island, which is a forest. Nice, nice. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Sir June Lit here is suggesting that for the new um, metroxylon, if if it is ever found, the um, metroxylon gulaman. I think this is a. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> bucket. Why? Why, sir? Okay. Uh, so from Adrian uh, again. So how do you mount your voucher specimens? So given that they have very huge leaves and uh, yes, yes. inflorescence. Okay. Um, that is really a problem, no? For palms. I say very uh, it's very bulky specimen. That's why when uh, you, you just need to have multiple sheets for a single collection. Mm -hmm. So and you need to secure it with the strings and glue and etc. And uh, finally, no, when uh, we go field work, no, when I collect four palms, mostly I have the uh, largest volume of collection by volume, no, because of their sheer dimension. So I, it's just that now multiple sheets for a single collection. Mm -hmm. So hindi yun na kailangan ng box or something like that for the During my thesis, the no, actually, um, 800 liters na mega box yung uwi namin. <laughs> <laughs> Dami na. That's around what? That's around four to five boxes, di ba? Uh, so, okay. So, uh, and uh, among the palms that you've encountered and described, sir, which among them are? Are your is or are your favorite and why? I think okay, so cheesy to ah. <laughs> it's just like a Miss Universe of, question, huh? Of course, um, one of the uh, most no so I discovered called it was actually my first to describe no is actually the one I, I named after my wife no mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oranya Zaye, but I find it hard to propagate and I hope we'll have success soon. So next to that is actually um yung uh, probably the new genus of palm, no? that which we are collaboratively working on. And uh, hopefully by this year, may labas namin siya, no? Yes, I, um, and uh, there's more, no? When we go maybe to uh, Hamigitan or uh, Dinagat or extreme northeast Luzon, there, there could be more. Mm -hmm. But it's a start, no? It's a yes. start. Yung uh, Amuring, they call it Amuring. And... Uh, Surprisingly, no, the seed of Amuring no, is actually now available by palm enthusiasts worldwide. Since wala pa siyang law no, that prohibits collection, sa international trade kasi, I don't know how they do it. No? They actually price it as 6,000 per seed. Pesos or that, US dollars? Um, 6,000 pesos. Pesos? Yay. Per seed, no? But... um. That, that's why I don't disclose yung, the locality, no? but uh, it's actually on, my, on our paper no? on May 17. But um, with, with all hopes high, no? um, we hope to make it actually a flagship for Philippine palms more than the Adonija Merile. Okay. Uh, a question from uh, Sir Jun Lit. Uh, uh, Jiro, do you also collect pollinators of palm flowers they would be very interesting also after all insects are the best plant taxonomists so yes yes um actually uh, I, I want to study on that further no because um the reproductive strategy and uh, mostly the one in one association of most insects with palms but um for large erect palms the pollinators are mostly um generalists no as, as, as opposed to orchids, which are uh, specialists or other plant groups. But um, I have not collected yet, and mm -hmm. I will show you when I do, sir. <laughs> okay. 
So from uh, Eleanor Villaverde, um, she's asking, are there secondary metabolites uh, in palms? So mm -hmm. she usually hear of palms uh, in the context of taxonomy and timber and coconuts. So mm -hmm. how about uh, you know, uh, secondary products or metabolites which can be also okay. uh, very useful? Okay. Um. Actually, there there are few, no. So uh, there are few, you know, of mostly are alkaloids. No, mga I don't know if they could be classified as hallucinogens, no, because some palms they found it to be a uh, slightly toxic or very toxic when eaten, no, especially the sap or the fruit. Uh, the 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 oranya, no, the oranya palms are known to uh to cause um uneasiness and uh swelling of mouth and throat no? but it's actually not a uh, very little for uh for ultimate uh ultimately death no hindi naman so uh, I, i believe there are and this is a good avenue to start with no and the nga no the uh, what 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 it's actually the the narcotic within the nga nga or the betel nuts is least studied in the philippines So um, I think it's a good uh, avenue to embark no, for secondary metabolites. So maybe we can ask yung the natives mm -hmm. who really know the plants. Yes. yes. So uh, from Sir Jickerson Lado, uh, Sir, if any, were you able to observe palm species with unique variations in the endosperms? Aha, uh -huh. so uh, actually, you know, I, I want to share something with Sir Jeter because he's into uh, Makapuno. No? Mm -hmm. I observed, no, parang uh, there's a Makapuno-like endosperm in Oranya sibuyanensis. And I, I just assume that it's just through development, no? It will start with a um, semi-liquid endosperm and as it matures, it will become solid. That I'm not sure now, no? But um, I've observed, no, and the one that we're describing, no, the new probably new genus. I I've collected the immature plants, no, and I've seen makupuno-like structures, no, yung mga semi-fluid um, endosperm, which I uh, through my experience, no, field experiences and observations throughout six five years, they actually uh, I came to conclude na. It's actually the part of their development, but um, if we can arrest the development and study on mm -hmm. such a uh, mixture, it would be great. So, um, thank you, Sir Jigger, for that question. And uh, we have a question here from Aldrin Deliosa. And the question is, a few years back, the coconuts in Calabarzon were infected by Cocolisap or the coconut scale uh, insects. So, are there other pests or even diseases which can be a threat to possibly other palm species? Yeah, and so actually um, since this is just um, first phases of discoveries, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are very few, no? But I know Sir Balatibat described some um, scale insects from palms no, in Mount Makili and even Sir June Leaf. Mm -hmm. So um, as for other native species, I have not observed it yet. Mm -hmm. It's because, no, maybe because no, they, ha they have actually a um, natural uh, defense against such pests. And these mm -hmm. palms occur on natural environment of which pest is not a problem. Yes, so mm -hmm. I think hindi kasi katulad nung like those in coconut, uh, coconut plantations, uh, mas madaling mag, uh, proliferate yung mga pests and diseases because uh, may monoculture ng palms there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Leslie Obiso says, uh, presently on, um, there's a thesis proposal on environmental evaluation of buri, uh, which is used in the weaving industry here in Barili, Dumanjug, areas of southwest uh, Cebu. And his mm -hmm. wife is also documenting other uses of metroxylon starch in baking cookies. So that's mm -hmm. uh, why uh, he's very interested with this seminar. So nagagamit pala yung metroxylon for baking cookies. Apo, as in yung starch mismo sa stem pit niya is the natural mm -hmm. sago. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh -huh. so, uh... Thank you, Leslie, for that uh, information. 
And uh, okay, Dave General says uh, he's asking when you will be probably col collaborating in the field. So uh, I'm all, all, always in uh, line with um, with Sir Dave, no? So mm -hmm. lagi naman kami <laughs> Okay, so Adrian, uh, I think this this is the last shout out by Adrian. Thank you, Prof Jiro, and uh, he's hoping to see you again and do field okay. work. Okay, na kami si niya field work kasama yung mga. Okay. So thank you then, Sir Jeker, for your question. And to everybody, I guess um, there's uh, no more questions here. And before we uh, end our program, let me just uh, grab our virtual certificate of uh, <laughs> recognition. Wait, bigay ko dalang pagadon. Let me grab so the UPLB Museum of Natural History, um, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension, awards this uh, certificate of recognition to Prof. Jiro T. Adorador for uh, serving our as our resource person today uh, in the 2021 MH Biodiversity Seminar Series entitled Palm Bihira, Contemporary Discoveries of Philippine Palms, held today, uh, April 30, 2021, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Philippines standard time by Zoom. So in witness were of the signature of our director, Dr. Marian P. De Leon is hereby affixed. And uh, make sure that you uh, click on that link, which I have pro provided in the chat box. Or if you want to answer it later, just go to bit.list slash 2021-bss-eval and we will be accepting responses until 3 p.m. only. So... Here are links to our website. Uh, you can write us at mnh.uplb at uplb.edu.ph. We are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for the handle UPLB Museum and check out our articles. UPLB Museum in TripAdvisor and Wikipedia. And um, don't forget to go to our YouTube channel later. So, pwede yung panoorin ulit yung aming recording. Um, probably it will be uploaded uh, within the day or tomorrow morning. So with that, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat uh, to all our audiences. Uh, thank you for being with us again. And of course, to Sir Jiro, maraming salamat for accepting our invitation. And it was a very good and fruitful discussion with you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Okay. Maraming salamat, sir.